Right, as well as kicking over my rockery this morning, the postman has kindly brought me my Pop Station value pack. This line was said on March 29th, 2006. That's 16 years ago. That was the line I heard from the first video I ever watched on YouTube. The man who said them was none other than Stuart Ashen, the first channel I ever subscribed to here on YouTube. He is one of my biggest inspirations for even starting a YouTube channel and making content. And I do contribute my style on how I do videos a lot to how he did them with his brown sofa as the background, except my take is, Mouse Matten, Band-Aids. Things just worked out well, I guess. One of my highlights was being able to send products to Ashens for review back in 2016 as well as a brief conversation with him, and that's roughly when I started really thinking about doing this big YouTube journey. So I have to give a special thank you to him for making content throughout the years, and for times when I really needed someone to just cheer me up, I'd go onto YouTube, and there would be a video from Ashens talking about various Tatten electronics and all that sort of good stuff. So with that being said, I do hope that people have that same experience with my content. If you're having a bad day and you see me upload and watch a bit of it, even if you just smile from it, think positive in that moment, then that is definitely what makes me happy at the end of the day. So in today's video, what I wanted to do is explore a variety of pop station things that I've collected over the years due to watching several of Ashen's videos. Some he's already reviewed and some he hasn't, so what I want to do is just a very rambly video about them, have a play through them, tear them down, and just see how things go. I'll put timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip through wherever you need to be. Here's to Ashen's. Hope you made more Pop Station content since the last one was in 2020, and I hope I have your blessing to be able to look at these Pop Stations and do my own thing with them, and what better way to start off than the original Pop Station that you've been staring at for the last couple of minutes, right here. This is what kickstarted me collecting various clones and bootlegs and all that sort of stuff. This right here, Pop Station Game Plus Radio with one earphone, just one, always remember that. The hand strap and the blue backlight. Around the box kind of looks like what a PSP box would look like, except we've got Pop Station written on the sides, and the rear view has an earphone jack. At least these things have headphone jacks, unlike today. And on the back, we've got Function Keys Manual. Press on off key to turn on or off the game. Auto power off function will in effect after five minutes upon the last press button. That makes sense. Backlight switch is optional. If the unit has backlight display, please turn on off the backlight by the switch. Uh, it has an FM auto scan radio manual, which by the way, I did use this to listen to the radio and play Tetris on this thing. It wasn't the best experience, but the electricity had gone out due to severe weather. So I got this out of the box and chucked in some headphones and off I went. Takes four AAA batteries, and there's the famous sad onion there as well. Well, if we open up the box, which has uh, seen better days, we have... I thought I had instructions in here. I don't. Here is my pop station. Oh, oh, uh-oh, um, well that's not good. I've had this sitting in my garage for five years and uh, I forgot to take the batteries out of it. That's fine, we'll clean it up. Oh man, there were Toshiba ones too. I've barely cleaned it up, but I'm just gonna see if it does work. It probably won't, but you never know, it may. Ah, uh, that's this pop station then. We did it. Everything should work now, so plug in the headphones just there. We've got the little sound control just there like so. And that's basically how you switch the FM radio on. And looking around this pop station, ignore the batteries, that's fine. We've got ZC2032 on here. 10 more years and this will be valuable. We've got start and pause, sound, the D-pad, which is just mushy buttons, scan, reset, rotate, reset, on, off. Little grooves up here to imitate a PSP and the screen, which is just a sticker. And then you've got the actual screen just there with the backlight, which off, on, off, on. And then pretty much, yeah, around it, there's not much to talk about, to be honest. It's just a hunk of plastic. But I'll go ahead and see if the FM radio is working. Maybe these earphones aren't compatible? Let me try the original factory ones. Unfortunately, FM radio doesn't work, but I can still demonstrate this. So you have 23 different games and 48 different levels. So let's start with Tetris. At level one, start and... Here you go. This is it. I mean, 
It's a brick game, you know, you can't expect too much here. But it's Tetris, it's classic Tetris, on a cheap knockoff, and if the FM radio was working, then you could go ahead and play Tetris to your heart's content. You know, it's fairly faithful for what it is anyways, it's Tetris. How can you get blocks falling wrong? I mean, it could happen. Oops. Uh, so, yeah, and the backlight does help, even though it's kind of you know, flashing in and out, it does, you know, it does its job. And that's it. So you reset it and you hear that. So you've got a tank game, uh, racing. I'm going to show you the racing one, actually. There you go. <laughs> yep, that's racing. So you've got a breakout clone and then like a shoot the brick sort of thing, uh, then like a jewel breakout sort of thing, and then another shoot the blocks to destroy the blocks, and uh, fill the blocks to destroy the blocks, and then Tetris, and Tetris, 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 Tetris. Mostly Tetris. I'll try the breakout one. Oh, look, see? Oop. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's pretty fun. And there's Breakout, where the love heart doesn't attack you. And yeah. That's how that works. Backlight off, off it goes, and that's it. That's the first pop station. As I said, it's just a simple brick game. Tetris, tanks, Breakout, all that sort of thing. Very basic on the cheap LCD, but back in 2006, this would have been fine to pick up for five bucks and throw it at your kid and say, hey, play this for a little bit. It'll be fine. Actually, thinking of it, I remember I was on a bus going somewhere and a guy pulled out a pop station and was just happily playing it on the bus. I'll display the picture right here. There he is. Just, just having a good time. So, nothing wrong with that. I don't know when that photo was taken. That's that. Well, let's whip the batteries out. Yep. Just get all the debris out of it too. Come on. Sad that I never even checked this for the batteries. I thought I would have taken them out, but turns out I didn't. Sad. That's okay. I'll get around to cleaning this one day. I've got other pop stations to test, so it's no big deal, but this one's in its original box, which makes it a collector's item, I guess. Do people sell pop stations on eBay? I wonder. People are probably like, these are super rare. Ultimate PSP console modded 100% Pandora's box. Yeah, that'll do. And the innards of the first pop station look a little something like this. This fuckery here. Oh yeah, that's probably why the FM radio is not working. I'll just... Clean that, like so, there we go. I just cleaned off this contact because it had a lot of crap on there. I'm gonna resolder this back onto there and just see if it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. But pretty much what's inside of it is cheap LCD, then the controls, and then this here is the FM radio, which actually has ZC 2032 written on it. And also just the soldering job right there. So if you wanna take all that in there, feel free. Let's just see if it still works. I tried to fix it, but... I think I fixed it. Backlight still works. Nah. Well, that is about all I'm gonna do with that one. So I'll just leave it in its box. At least it doesn't have batteries in it now. Um, I'll come back to this another day because I've still got plenty more that I want to show you all. Like the Neo Double Games. This was the second pop station thing I believe that Ashens did review on his channel. This is pretty much the exact same thing. So I've got an on off switch, a headphone jack, and then it says master there, but there's nothing there. Slave and there's nothing there. Then we've got N12618 past something. So that's good. Obviously ripping off the first iteration of the Nintendo DS and then opening it up. So essentially how this works is you grab this one out and then you grab this one out and then you swap them around like so and there you go that's how you change games you've got two games there but yeah street fighter and submarine invasion and ashens has both reviewed these so i'll just power this one on and there is city fighter where you throw your arms at everyone i will choose this guy yep you can barely see what's going on, but, uh, yep, it's just essentially a, you know, beat 'em up fight 'em game, Tekken, just 
multiple little sprites that are on the LCD already. You can't do much. I'm just pressing buttons and yeah, that's about it. Plugging headphones in just makes it play audio on headphones, which I'm sure you don't want to do. There you go. That's a pretty cool beat. I approve of that. And the best part about this as well is you can just go like that. And then when you want to play it, it's pretty sophisticated. So if we grab Street Fighter and Submarine Invasion, and yeah, it's just some contacts along there, some rubber contacts that this contacts with on the LCD, just like so. That rests against that. And that's how it knows, hey, there's a different game here. I can do different stuff. You can't see anything. Yeah, there you go. So if you start, uh, it's just shoot and destroy everything and get destroyed as well. Yeah, you really can't see much that's going on there. So there's also just this big silver thing here. I'm not too sure what that'll do, but there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Also, there's only one speaker, not two. Nothing too interesting. I wish I would have got the box with it, but you know, it is what it is, I suppose. But this isn't as fun as the previous pop station because you only get two games and that's it. Once you've played this for all but 30 seconds, you just switch it off and off you go. At least the Pop Station block game provided Tetris and Breakout and all that sort of stuff. Good stuff. And FM Radio. Let's take this one apart. And I know that I've left batteries in here for a while, so out you come. So let's see what the motherboard looks like in this, because I'm quite curious to see what this looks like. Considering that's got options for Master and Slave, do you reckon they would have intended this to have more features with pricier models, I guess? If you wanted the deluxe pack of the Neo Double games, you would get controllers. I'm not too sure. I will show you one that does come with a controller though, which is a pretty interesting thing, but uh, we'll get to that soon. And if we just pop the last screw off and just take this off like, there we go. And flipping that over like this, what is this? So they've just put some aluminium foil over the battery compartment and then they've just left the cut out here. So that's what you see here. Why didn't they put something there like a sticker? That would have looked cool, but instead they just put tape over that to hide that. Yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. And just two boards for the controls like so, not much there. So I'll just place that down, pretend like I didn't see anything. I'm kind of questioning to myself the original Pong arcade cabinet that was released back in what, 76 or something? That's more advanced than this thing right here. This contraption is pretty much the absolute bare bones thing to have an electronic game, basically. And so then popping the top portion off, Ta-da! That's the guts. <laughs> You've got an epoxy blob that basically has the two built-in games into it. And then pretty much those screens have little contacts that communicate with these little contacts to tell whatever's under that little epoxy blob what game you've put in and thus game activates. And that's how all that works. I just love how there's these two huge prongs sticking out there that they've soldered the wires into. It's a fairly good job that they've done. One speaker as well. And you can use headphones if you wanted to. That is the innards of the Neo Double games. Does it still work? certainly does awesome well maybe i've broken the hinge a little bit more that doesn't matter uh let's move on to the next one then now the next one i have is something fairly obscure this is mario adventure in a ripoff of a sega game gear sort of looking case but uh yeah mario adventure and there's a little dude running there and it's a ts 1700h start sound pause on off in the most 2000s font ever so popping open the battery compartment it has two double a's it says qc past 11 don't know if that means 2011 or something but anywho The sound's a little bit more advanced on this one, but if you have a look, it's, uh... There you go. It's Super Mario Brothers block version. So, uh, very similar to Super Mario Land. Uh... What the hell happened? Okay, I have no idea what I'm doing. So you press A, which does something like that, and then that does something like that, and then that does something like that. Aha! 
There we go. You just have to press start really, really uh, firmly to get it going. This has a vibration motor built into it. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I, I should really look where I'm going, shouldn't I? So you just... Yep, you go ahead and this is uh, Primitive Super Mario Brothers. For having a vibration motor, that's uh, that's kind of unique. Yeah, I can not see anything. <laughs> I'm looking through the viewfinder, trying to see what I'm doing there. And uh, I'm, I'm failing, I know that. Oh, wait, I can fire. Huh. Okay, that's somewhat interesting. Yep, that makes sense. Cool. I mean, this is kind of cool, I guess. It's... Super Mario Brothers as primitive as you're gonna get and you can fire at enemies which I don't even know what they are What are the enemies? Oh, they're just exact clones of me. Oh, that makes sense And also the level is actually just all me. The whole screen is basically just your character over and over again It's not an LCD that can display different things on it It's an LCD that's already got the sprites on there and it just lights up different pieces to wherever it needs to be You can see it in different lights if you just look close enough, you'll see all... Yep, there they are. All there. And if I stare at it like this, I can't see anything. I have to look at it directly like that. Well, let's choose a different game then. What is this? Like, Boulder Dash or something? Or... I got no idea. And this one is just... On rails? Shooting? Stuff? And dodging stuff? It's... You know, sort of like the underwater level, I guess, in Super Mario Brothers kind of thing. Yeah, that vibration motor is actually quite strong. Also, the sticker is lifting up. Anything under it? No, there's nothing under it. That's pretty advanced. It's sophisticated. Also, the controls weren't terribly bad. It's just this big hunk of plastic here for the D-pad, and the buttons are very mushy, but obviously this may be quite old, so that's why the start button isn't working. Uh, and there's a lanyard attached to it too. I wonder what the box for this would have looked like. But yeah, that is what Super Mario Brothers would look like if Super Mario Land was then broken down into a block-style game on a shitty LCD handheld like this, and then further made even more primitive. Just agree with it, just agree with it. Well, let's take out the however many screws and have a look at the innards of this. It'll be very interesting to see, actually. I don't know if it's worth taking the strap off. I might leave it on there, just for the whole nostalgia. But you folks are going to have to tell me which is the best console out of all of these, once you see the rest of them that I'm going to demonstrate off. If you had a choice to play any one of the consoles that I'm going to show today, which one would you choose? Let me know down in the comments, because uh, we, we haven't seen... <laughs> The, uh, the worst of it yet. Taking out all the screws and then lifting this out ever so slightly. Stuff soldered to stuff. Never mind. There we go. Wow, look at that. That's an actual legit vibration motor in there. Holy crap. And the innards look like that. That's just a clusterfuck of fuckness. Looking at the uh, technology that is on the board there, I would say that is actually fairly old. But vibration motor, look at that thing right there. I'm not lifting off the boards that hold the controls because it's just literally the two contacts. I could lift this off to display the screen, but I think you're probably already going to know what's under there. Uh, unless I wanted to fix the start button, which for something this old, I might just leave this as it is. I'll just put this back together. If anyone wants to go for a Google search, I might do it myself, uh, just to see if anyone's documented this bootleg thing. I mean, it's a Game Gear, so when was that released? 93 or something? So, you know, for them to rip off a Game Gear. I mean, you could also argue it kind of looks like a- nah, I was gonna say it looks like a Nomad, but nah, it's more of a Game Gear. Very strange, very unique, that's for sure, but yep, Mario Adventure. The Game Boy Color, teal colorway, kind of reminds me of that, color-wise sort of thing. And it's see-through too. So maybe it's early 2000s. Who knows? If anyone wants to go for a Google, feel free and let me know. Okay, so we're dealing with another block game, but this time it's in a kind of unique shell. Okay, it is fairly unique. This is the play block. <laughs> We've got a bootleg PlayStation logo there, P and B for play block, obviously. You've got the D-pad, which is just completely mushy, but this is the exact same size as a normal PlayStation um, controller, so they got that right. There's also a middle button there for on and off. There's two LEDs, start, pause, reset, rotate, and sound, and going around it, there's obviously one speaker just there, and then you've got this big, huge thing that holds the screen that'll come out, and then shoulder buttons, which do nothing. They're just 
bits of plastic that they've put there to just make it look more official. I don't know, it looks pretty interesting, but gets more interesting when you uh, lift that up and you have this, the official branded play block with dust that's uh, gathering on this. So the PlayStation was released in 1995, 96 or something. So I wonder when this one's from. Brick games like this have been around for years and they're still selling them to this day, which is just crazy. Let's put some batteries in, have a look and see how many games are on here. So double A's. One, shit. Oh shit. The LEDs are going off their heads, nice. Uh, yeah, 99 in one, here we go. If we just do uh, rotate, uh, sound. Okay, the buttons are just really stuck, that's all. Now, start, start, start. Start. You can do it. I believe in you. Come on. We can do it, buddy. I just love the built-in LEDs. <laughs> it's a cool gimmick. And the screen is adjustable too, so you can have it at that angle if you want to lay back like that or if you want to have it like that. And, oh, look at that. Many, many angles of adjustment. is It's excellent. It's good. I can't start a game though. <laughs> I can't even demonstrate it. Aw. Oh, the reset button works. No, it doesn't. None of the buttons work. Well, you all know what this is going to be. It's just going to be another Tetris and racing and all that sort of stuff. But I wanted to at least showcase some of it going on there. Nah. No go. No go. Okay. Well, let's tear this one apart then. Yeah, I wonder if there's actually a collector's market for these. I've seen so many at the flea market that I've just said no to because they're just mainly pop stations. But if there's something obscure, you know, taking off a design like, for example, this, you know, I'll, I'll purchase it. But otherwise, you know, the brick games that are just like the rectangular ones and stuff, there's nothing special about them. You know, it is what it is. How does this one work? How, how do you work? Oh God, okay, alrighty. So, the innards look a little something like that. So one speaker, a glob of hot glue, two globs of hot glue quality and yeah the buttons are just <laughs> these hunks of plastic yeah that's fair quality control as well with hot glue there and the wires from the led just coming out and going into there so the d-pad works but it's this that doesn't work yeah, they look pretty clean i don't know why they shouldn't work they should work that's what that looks like though so it's just contacts and that's it on the pcb what does it say there trg03 1kb or 03 1kb and then i'll pop this back on making sure all the wires go back in there don't want any wires sticking out the top portion looks a little something like this can't quite get into this one but the innards is just that pcb screen attached to that the little rubber contacts just there and that's about it for this one test to see if it works still Nah, did fix it. Okay. All right, well, that's the play block. So we'll move on to the next one. I think Ashens did review this. The block zone. So this is a PlayStation 1. It's about the same size as a PlayStation Mini Classic. It's pretty much the same size, but there's just this controller hanging off there like so. Show that in a second. Your volume, start, open, the Block Zone logo, which, you know, just like Play Block. And then the back there, nothing else around the sides. You've got the fake ventilation uh, speaker there. The controller though is actually this. You can sit back and play your favorite block games just like this. So if you press the open button, it pops open like a disc tray, and there you go. You've got block zone going on there. You also have on and off in there and reset. Yeah, mini tiny controller. It's kind of cute and it feels absolutely terrible. And you have just one button as well. Not even two, just, just one. And then also the, the holes. <laughs> <laughs> just straight through for the uh, memory card and controller ports are just through the plastic. When you're finished, you know, with the controller, you just, like a vacuum cleaner, you just kind of shove the cable back in there like so. Just give it a moment. Hang on. We're almost there. There we go. Getting there. Features. There we go. Like that. See? It's all in one. Let's put the batteries in. Get this thing going.
people are sleeping. All right, now if I just do this, we just go, yep, so we can select the things. So pretty much the same sort of game set. There's a shoot 'em up, there's breakout, there's breakout, sort of breakout again. Is there actually Tetris on here? Racing, racing, racing. No, that's not racing. Shoot 'em up, uh, something or other. Frogger, I think. There's Tetris there. Okay, so normal Tetris is there. Let's start with normal Tetris. So start. Yay! Did the did that Tetris block just change? Uh, uh, okay, okay, that's a bit strange. Uh, you can just spawn whatever uh, Tetris block you want. That makes sense. I love that little pow pow pow. That sounds familiar too, but I can't point it out. I don't know what it is. Let's play this this tank thing. Destroy everything. Yep. Oh, the controls on this are, are pretty tacky. The LED as well. So if you just... It has to imitate the real deal. <laughs> it's worth it for the LED. <laughs> it's worth it just for the LED. So that's this thing then. All the games are pretty much exactly the same as on the pop station, except you get a little bit more variety in terms of uh, your... That happened. Please don't play that again. You get different choices of variety, which is kind of interesting. But you'll notice that all of these brick games are pretty much just all exactly the same. Five or six different games, and then you've got variations of them. So we've got the controller to take apart first. Is that meant to be like that? Did they not cut the plastic out? That's good. All right, we'll just take it apart as it is. I just want to see how small the PCB is in this. It's going to be tiny. It's this little tiny, itty-bitty little thing, isn't it? Oh, look at it. It's adorable. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> yep, they've got two screws in a plastic bracket that holds down the cable. It works. And the spray paint job that they've done there. Good. Good quality. So I'll just put that back together somehow. Oh, hello. So I'll open the bottom up just so we can see how long the cable is. Because it's obviously got to be hooked onto something. It's got to be something holding it in place. Honestly, I think it's more fascinating to tear these down than actually play them because we kind of already know what to expect. So it's just interesting to see the innards. That Game Gear one with the vibration motor, it still got me. I did not know it had one. All right, so this looks a little something like, oh my God. There's the plastic holding that down into place like so. The spring-loaded mechanism speaker that's in there. That's, there we go. Oh. That's going to come off. That's all right. The boards for the buttons and all that sort of good stuff. No worries. We've seen inside of that. Yeah, the cable is pretty much at its maximum length. And when you push it back in, it's got so much space inside of there that the cable will just snake around and just sit in there. The possibility of modding one of these, I mean, it's very cheap plastic, but the possibility of modding something like this and adding a Raspberry Pi into it, you know, that's kind of interesting. Taking the top portion off of our block zone. Block zone sounds very 2002. They should have called it block zone extreme. That would have made it more 2000s. They come off like so, that comes off like that, and then this just sort of pops off something like so. Okay, so I'm doing something wrong. I was supposed to take the bottom off and then take this off in order to get to it, but it's pretty much the same thing. PCB in there, very cheap LCD with the two rubber contacts sitting against the PCB and that's pretty much it and a bunch of wiring that hooks it all up together. Okay, so just put that back in there like so. Plenty of room for the cable to sit. And then you just kind of do a little something like that. Ignore the plastic cracking and we're good to move on to the next one. Two pop stations. These are exactly the same. They are called G1. G1, I guess? These actually have a bit of quality going on. The sticker around the screen is holographic. Look at that. It makes it look realistic. 
but this is very, very lightweight. This is the lightest pop station that I have. Uh, yeah, G1, no idea. I think these were bundled with some of those kids' magazines back in the early 2000s, I believe. No idea where I've got these from. Basically, looks like another PSP, but it's called the pop station with rotate for all four buttons. ZC305B, on off, SP reset sound, uh, you know, your PSP icons and stuff like that. No headphone jack, no nothing. You can put a lanyard there if you wanted to. So let's just play the green one because why not, man? The green one, you know, is uh, it's a good color. Good. Shut up. You know where this is going. It's exactly the same as the first one. Oh, except the buttons just get stuck under the plastic. You know, no, no problems. This one. Okay, yep. So Tetris. Uh, yeah, and the buttons are stuck into the plastic. You can't really get far with that. I mean, you could just press all of them at the same time if you wanted to, and that would work. See, Pro Tetris. Pro. You did it. Well done. I love how there's only sound on, sound off. No volume or anything. It's just off on. Okay, so you can choose the speed. One, and the level. One. Make it as basic as possible. And then the game selections. Tetris, 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 Tetris. Tanks, racing, breakout. You know, the other shoot 'em up breakout stuff. All the other buttons are stuck into the plastic again. How many games? There's 23. So I'd say 23 and 48. Exactly the same as the first pop station. So going by what they've included on here, the innards of this will be exactly the same as the first pop station, I assume. Only one way to find out, isn't there? As I said, more fun to just tear these apart. And because I've got two of them, if I break one, it's not that bad. I actually don't really want to break these, to be honest. Even though they've literally just been sitting in my garage and collecting dust for all these years, and I've thought, oh, I'll get around to reviewing them one day and playing around with them. Now it's finally the day, and, you know, I still want to keep them in somewhat good condition. I've just got to be a little gentle with these things, as the plastic is very, very brittle. And one wrong move and crack. Yeah, that, there you go. <laughs> it is, it's just one button. No, they couldn't implement four buttons. No, it's just one big button. That's good. So maybe this one, I'll actually show you how the LCD does function. I'll take this off so you can get a better look at how this thing actually works. So epoxy blob holds the games. It's probably like two kilobytes <laughs> of, of storage on here to hold these. Um, and then that's basically it, to be honest. Stuff that connects to things and things work. Don't ask me, it's somehow magic. So that's all it is there. So lifting out the LCD, right, looks a little something like that. The glass, and then you've got pretty much just two layers of glass sandwiched together. And then you've got the display layer in there. These two pink rubber contacts communicate with those on there. That's how that works. It's not very complicated at all, and yeah. Our little epoxy blob there holds the games that are included with this. And of course we have the speaker that's just chilling in there. That definitely works as you heard. How much would one of these cost to make? Three cents. The case would probably be the most expensive part of this perhaps. Or the speaker. I don't know. Oh wait, this one's different. This one has an option for a screw. This one doesn't. Quality. I'll just quickly try this. Just see if it's the same. You never know. It may have a different jingle. Oh yeah, that's a little bit different. It's slower. It's getting there. It's good. All right. Yep. Off we go. I mean, it's fairly smooth, I guess. Can you make a Tetris game laggy? Yes. Put ray tracing on it. Problem solved. Yep. Pro Tetris. Good stuff. The next one is the Jumbo Display Wonderful Sound Effect. I'm fairly sure you know where that's from. Earphone, hand strap, colorful display, quality, pro <laughs> actually says quality product. 
Ah, uh, yes you are, yes you are. Four exciting games, collect them all. So it's not four games, it's uh, one game on this. Now, and you would also think as well, kind of looking at that, that that's a big huge display there, but no, it's not. It's essentially submarine invasion sort of thing, stuck down into one unit like so. Also, I've pinched the earphones. Why would I have done that? I have no idea, but I have. Have I taken the lanyard? I have not taken the lanyard. Flipping it over though, as you can see, I've just sliced through there. Function keys, manual, turn on or off the unit. That seems pretty fair to me. Optional games, Soccer, Street Fighter, Submarine Invasion, and Racing Car. Imported by Australian Discount Retail Trading. Oh, that was, this is from um, the Reject Shop, I think. I think this came from the Reject Shop, possibly. Not too sure. Please retain this important information. I certainly will. I have done so for many, many years, and there's dust all gathering on this, but taking out our pop station here. Actually, this is not pop station. It's, uh, it's just thing. So we have the on-off switch. Haven't left batteries in there. The D-pad, which feels crap. We've got triangle, square, triangle, and square. No branding whatsoever, just pretty bare bones, basic. You've got a headphone jack also on there. And then popping that open, we've got triple A's that we need to populate, so triple A. But you know that this is Street Fighter, so... <laughs> it's not a lot to do in this one, but I'll show you. And we just go on. And that's it. Well, it's City Fighter, but you know, it's close enough. And, uh, yep, there we go. So if we just start, where's the sound? Yep, throw your fists in the air. Um, th the sound doesn't work. Yep, we'll choose you, and then we will raise our fists. Oh, yeah, okay, it's working. Yep, so I'll just punch, 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 punch. Uh, yep. You can't even see anything. I'm trying to look at the actual unit to see what I'm doing. I should look in the viewfinder to see what I'm doing. Uh, who's winning? Am I winning? Did I win? I think I won. Did I win? Backlight is working, as you can see. It's just popping out that way and popping out that way. And you get City Fighter and... Oh yeah, if you do this, you see... You see all the many, many uh, options for the LCD to display. Just lights up whichever area that it needs to when you're controlling it, and that's pretty much it. Also, I was going to compare these to an actual PSP, but uh, there's no point, because you can see that they're much smaller than a PSP. The screens aren't even close, and, you know, you get the whole idea of what's going on here. This is just more of a showcase of these cheap things. We're still not done yet. <laughs> We're still not done. We've got a couple more to go. But I reckon the speaker has probably... The contacts have probably just come loose or something like that. It's been sitting in storage for so many years. God knows what's happened inside of it. Let's have a look and see what the innards look like. So popping that... Oh, okay. Yep. So that's looking very much like the Neo Double Games. Yeah, Neo Double Games. So Poxy Blob, the interchangeable LCD that was on the Neo Double Games is just built into this and that's exactly how this works. It is identical to the Neo Double Games games actually. Speaker is looking fine. Looks okay. Everything seems to be completely fine. Also, what the hell have they done here? There's just hot glue there and hot glue. That's, no, they've actually burnt the plastic. Yeah, they've burnt through the plastic to, to put it in place. I guess whatever works will work. <laughs> Don't know why the speaker doesn't work. Maybe it was silent when I first got it. I've got no idea. I don't remember it. Let's just see if I fix the sound somehow. Go on sound. You can do it. Did I fix the sound? Oh no, I've completely broken it. Okay, well, that's completely broken now. Well, it was half broken to begin with, so... No big loss, even though I kind of wanted to keep it in working condition anyways. It's okay. It still looks nice inside the packaging. See? Factory. Speaking of Neo Double Games, so here's the original unit here, which is also slightly bigger than the actual Nintendo DS, the first release anyways. We've got two miniature little ones. And I've got to say, they do look cute, you know, up against that. Let's take this away and have a look at the two units. So pretty much looking like the first DS. Shoulder buttons that don't do anything. Cartridge slot, that's just part of the plastic mold. Made in China, of course it is. It's been scratched up heavily, so someone actually did use this. And flipping it open reveals that this one is GT Race. The D-pad is not even a D-pad, it's... Just, yeah, though, that's that's pretty terrible there. But the whole gimmick with this is that this is one whole screen here. So you'll be playing here and it'll go up there and it's like magic. A and B, mute, reset, start, and that's about it on your Neo double screen game thing. I don't even know what they would have called these. And this one here is Space Armada. And you've got the little sticker going around there. They're all space themed. Oh, okay. Let's load these up with some batteries then. What are they? Triple A's. Okay. Triple A. 
AAA. All right, so here we go, Space Armada. I've just realized that there's no on-off switch. You just put the batteries in and it just stays on. Bottom, fire, it goes to the top. It's pretty interesting. So if we press start, speaker's good. Uh, yep, we're good. See, and then you just wait for it to reach there. See? You've got a bit of a space background going on there, if you can kind of see that. Gives you more immersion and <laughs> all you can just hear is this droning sound. Just, yeah. Quality. Quality went into this. That is absolutely for certain. Oh, I somehow died. Okay. Uh, that's all right. We'll just keep going and, and just... It's the same thing. You just... Press A and move left and right and uh, listen to the sounds of the invaders making the sounds that they would absolutely make if they ever invaded Earth. That's Space Armada. So does it turn off if I do that? Or does it stay on? No, it stays on. The only way to truly turn it off is to just get your batteries out of there and that's how you do that. All right, well, let's try GT Race then. Cause surely that's gotta be really cool. You know, a racing game on two really cheap LCDs. It's gotta be really good, right? It has to be good. Oh shit, there's batteries in here. Oh God. And the Acme ones too. Wasn't Acme the name of um, Looney Tunes Road Runner with these little dynamite and stuff? I'm pretty sure it was Acme. And GT Race. Oh, uh oh, 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 there we go. Hello, holding reset, turns it off. No. Okay. Let's go. Which one am I? Uh, I'm, the, I'm the bottom one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Just, just round him. That's okay. It's just a continuous track that goes around. I'm guessing that's supposed to be the tires making noise, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah, the background changes. There's mountains now. There was a skyscraper and now there's mountains. It's, uh, yep. I'm also capped at 150 speed. No idea if it's miles or kilometers. Uh, probably kilometers, I'd say. There we go. It's a lot more playable now. Just make your own sounds. Oh, it didn't crash, okay. Yeah, anyways, uh, that's uh, GT Race. I just can't believe that it's in rough condition. Someone actually would have sat there and played this, actually getting really into this and going, I'm gonna actually beat this, I'm gonna beat this. I wanna see the congratulations screen. And then you get to the end of the race and it just resets. It would have been really sad to see that. All that time just wasted to see nothing. What's the background pinch from? It looks like Burnout, but I'm not too sure. I don't think it's Burnout. It's something else, but I'm just not too sure what it is. If you recognize where that's pinched from, tell me. And I'm wondering how this comes apart. So I'll only take one of these apart and I'll take apart GT Race because that's in the uh, worst condition. So do these come out? No. So how is this held together? I have no idea how to get the top portion off. I have a feeling it's being glued in those four areas there because these cannot come off at all. So they've just probably, yeah, just hot glued and just slapped it down into place and went done. But we can take the bottom part though to have a look and see the innards of this one. There's not going to be too much to look at, but as I said, it's more exciting to just tear these down. Just, I don't know, marvel the wonderful electronics that have gone into this. The wonderful electronics inside of this. Look, oh, okay. Oh, the speaker is very, very cheap. Basically a flex ribbon that goes to the top assembly and that's pretty much how that works. Two controller boards, you've got a single capacitor right there, epoxy blob. I mean, the flex ribbon kind of looks neat. There are two screws just near the hinge, which possibly is the way to completely disassemble this. I get a fair idea of what's going on, so put that back together, chuck all the screws in, and we'll move on to the next one. And as for the next one, it's pretty much exactly the same as the previous ones, except they're putting in a DS light shell. Instead of two squares, it's two circles, because, uh, legit. And just around it is just all cheap, brittle plastic, a place for a lanyard, if you wanted to put one there. Two screws hold down the battery cover, so just pop these fellas out. I don't know what game's on here. I think it might be Space Armada again. If it's a third one, that'd be good. Did I leave the batteries in here? I did not. Good on me.
What does that sound like? It is Soccer League. Oh, okay. Well, it's another game I can demonstrate. I have absolutely no fucking clue about soccer whatsoever. No idea how it works. All I know is that there's just people and they kick a ball into a net. That's that's all I know. I, I don't know anything else. The D-pad also <laughs> is just this chunk of plastic that's pretty much sunk down into the frame. You've got A and B. And yeah, it's just a slight remake of the previous ones, just in a new fancy housing, because why not? And it's looking like that. Can you see it? There's just a continuous... Oh, I'm the goalkeeper. Hang on. Oh, okay. Pass it to, to, to Jerry, and then he passes it to Louis, and then he passes it to Bob, and then Bob passes it to Robert, and then Paul passes it to John, and then John kicks it in that way, and the the ball's going everywhere. Man, did you see that ludicrous display last night? Oh, yeah, I, I, I certainly did. Wow, that's um, that's something. We'll just shut that. All right, quickly take the screws out of this one just to make sure and see if it's the exact same one. Yeah, I, I've got no idea about soccer. Literally, I'm the same as Moss in the IT crowd. Got no clue. Google some phrases and walk into a bar and start talking like that and you'll pick up friends immediately talking about soccer and all that stuff. That's how I would assume that works. Anywho, oh, it's slightly different. Nope, it's the same. So, epoxy blob, and the control boards, flex ribbon, and that's about it in that one. There's more screws in this one, I think. I put that on the slightly higher quality scale there. Okay, well, I'll just put that back together. I was going to try take the top off this one, but I have a feeling it's the exact same thing. It's just been sort of hot glued shut or something, because I don't think I can pull that off. And these are just all part of the frame. They've definitely done something. All right, so we're at the last of the Nintendo ones. The Wii game. Fairly sure Ashens has also reviewed this as well, but I can't remember. I'm fairly sure he did. But yet this is the Wii game, why? It's three games in one. It's the Wii, obviously. It's the Wii Mote with the built-in screen and controls. And you know, got the Nintendo colorway and you got the key functions and avoid table is only indicated how to play different games with Wii with key functions, but not for meeting on eight games in one. Each set includes three different LCD games and each can be interchanged by changing LCD display into the Wii, into the Wii, see, it's the Wii. Well, I'm gonna pop this open then can't wait to play our Wii game which yep there's your two extra games there no instructions and you just pop your buddy out of there like so and that's what that is so um how would you play it like you would with a classic game on the Nintendo Wii you'd hold it like that but the best thing with this though it's got a light button there's an LED built onto this you can use this as a torch so not only is this a handheld gaming console, but it's also a torch, so multiple features there. Also, there's this compartment here that only serves one purpose, to pop the games out. And, oh, the, uh, that came out with it. It's been stuck to that for quite a long time, so you just get the strip and you just sort of put it back in, and the epoxy blob is visible right there. So we'll give this two batteries. Want to see how bright it is? super bright. I mean, it lights up more at the top than it does anything else. And yeah, that's the same thing. So two buttons for the torch. Chuck that back on there like so. And you got soccer, city fighter, and car racing. All the ones we've seen before, but on a much smaller display. So pop that in there like so, and it should click. There we go. So power it on. And yep, car racing right there. Um, da -da 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 -da. Yep, then that is exactly what it is. Car racing. Ready, steady, go. Yep, that's uh, that's car racing. Oh, I can move, okay. Yep, I appear to be moving. I think I'm moving. Nice brake sounds, gotta admit sophisticated. Uh, the D-pad is pretty jank. The reset button works. On and off works. So I'll show you City Fighter as well, because it's slightly different, I think, if I remember correctly. I think it's slightly different. Oh, no, it's exactly the same. 
So you just, yep, yep, off you go. Do, 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 do. And punch, punch, kick, fight, throw, uh, all that sort of stuff. Yep. Boop, 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 boop. Don't know who's winning. Um, but while you're playing it, you can just activate the light if you want to. Makes it more fun. Oh, but doing that actually kills the game. Fair. Okay, well, I'll show you soccer. So, soccer looks a little something like this. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Maybe the batteries are dead. Hang on. Let's try new batteries. Did that fix it? Nope. It just died. No. Oh, uh, something just fell out of Oh, there was a screw that just fell out of it. Things are just falling apart. Oh, that's because this game is literally falling apart. Well, while we're here, we'll just do a little something like this. And there we go. So that's the game there. Just your LCD. So just put that. Nothing's going to stay together. Okay, well, I'll try City Fighter again and see if that works. Nope. Uh, it's dead. The light still works. It's still good. It's still good. It's still a torch. That's what matters the most. It's still a torch. Just goes to show how brittle the plastic is. Oh, yeah, they're not going to stay in there. It's kind of held together. Kind of. So let's investigate what exactly went wrong here. Okay. So, pulling that apart, we've got the button for the torch just there, and a couple of screws hold down the motherboard. And lifting that off, whoa, look at that. That's some sophistication right there. The motherboard says it's an MH151 5MB, maybe 5 megabytes, that epoxy blob is. I doubt it. 2007 this was made. Soldered button, the little contacts for the buttons as well. That's how that one works. The question is, why did it die? Okay, so I have a small problem with this one. I've taken it apart, but all of these little doodads, the little contacts, just kind of can't go back down now because I've pulled them all off and now they're all everywhere. So I have no idea how to do this. What I'll do is I'll reassemble this off camera because this is going to take quite a long time. And then once I've reassembled this and make sure it still works, we'll continue on to the last three. I've only got three left and they're all in packaging. And I know one of them has some funny spelling mistakes on them. So we'll be right back. Okay, so I've had my two week break and I decided to leave this in pieces until my two week break was over and put it back together. It was very painful to put it back together, but it's now back together and I do want to see if it works. I forgot to show you just around the box as well. That is where the games are supposed to go on the whole display thing because it looks cool. You know what I mean? But let me try it again. All right. I believe it's still work. Oh, hello. Oh, well, it did work for about three seconds. When I press the light, it dies. Oh, there we go. Yep, it still works, but when you press the light, it kills it. That makes complete sense, I suppose. So let's move on to the next one. And I've saved the absolute best for last. So let me put this back in the package all nicely and we'll continue on. Now for the next one, it's probably one you've seen before. The King of Fighters Bay Warship. This costs a whole $5 from some random $2 shop that I went to many years ago. It also has a lot of filthy dust all over it. Just ignore that because we have the PSP itself with the King of Fighters game. Just only one game with stolen artwork there. I'm not too sure where that could possibly be stolen from. Uh, the unit itself, which we'll get a better look at soon. The controller, Bay Warship, some more stolen artwork just up there. We've got some battleships and some planes and all that in the background there. Also, we have this down here. True quality of Silver Hawk H&J 106. So that means it's loaded with quality. But on the back though is where things get interesting. Because if we flip it over, we have the electronic handheld game, four game free selection. No, not free selection, free selection. Abandon interesting, enjoying intelligence. E.T. Ronaldo. War of... <laughs> War of Malvinas, Iron Fist Prodigal, and X Fighter Planes. <laughs> that is what you have for the game. I would have, I would have loved to have played E.T. Ronaldo. That would have been uh, definitely something far ahead of my time, that's for sure. We've got the console and the game controller, and it's sitting on a warship or battleship or whatever the hell you want to call it. So, we'll crack it open. Comes apart like that, and here we go. Look at this mess. The instructions are printed in here. You've got the Chinese side, and you've got the English side. Instructions on exchange. 
Strange game card. Iron Fist Prodigal. E.T. Ronaldo. How does E.T. Ronaldo work? Every grade the second step, our task is destroy enemies, tank, and plane. Okay, so all games on this are actually just planes and destroying submarines and all that sort of stuff. How did they get the name E.T. Ronaldo? Just agree with it at this point in time. You've seen so many, just agree with it. We have the unit itself, and then we have the fantastic game controller and all the dust and stuff that's been collecting in this for many, many years. I used to have a lot more pop stations, but I threw most of them out because I thought I'm never ever going to use these and I'll just keep the ones that I think are the best and I got rid of a Game Boy Micro one and big fighter jet one and all that sort of stuff I'll just play some pictures on screen while I'm rambling about these so you get to see what I used to have but I don't know where they are nowadays probably sent to landfill here's our PSP the king of fighters you can get a better look at the stolen artwork got the d-pad which feels terrible on off PSP just written there you know because it looks like a PSP doesn't it it's close enough uh, you have X Y A B reset start on the bottom, you have this janky port here, which is for this thing here. I'll show you that. Basically going around the unit, nothing else, just some silver detailing to make it look more authentic. And on the back, yeah, you just... It's been stuck in there for like 10 years. But there you go. There's the game there, the King of Fighters. So not much to see there. Just pop that back in. And the controller is an anchor. Yep. Why did they think this was a fantastic idea? Because it's two player, that's why. And um, yeah, the connection is just this here. That's your connection. That just sort of fits in there and off you go, your two player action. Let's get some batteries into this thing. I haven't left them in here, have I? No, I haven't. In we go. Glad it works still. Oh, no, nope, it doesn't work. Oh. Wait, it kind of works. You can just see some limbs floating around and stuff. If we just pop this out, maybe the strip is a little dirty, perhaps? That's okay. Give it a little bit of a clean. Did that fix anything? Oh, I kind of did. If I remember correctly, this is already broken when I first bought this. So I can't do terribly much about that. Oh, oh you can kind of see some stuff going on there. If I just press and hold it down. I don't know if I'm doing two player or not. We'll just say it worked. And I got to demonstrate the whole entire thing, but don't worry because if you want to see two player action, I've got more things coming up. So this one was just a quick one, just to showcase, you know, the whole look of it sort of thing. So I'll take it apart and have a look at the innards. I will also take apart the controller because I'm actually interested to see what technology they've put in there. Popping this open reveals a long motherboard with some components just there and there, and that's the controller port. I love the controller port, it's just this ribbon and they've just stuck that down there like that. Oh. Hello. Oh, yeah, that's what that looks like. Poxy blob, some contacts. Also, the D-pad comes apart in two bits. And it is an H&J 106, as it says on there, that's upside down, but don't worry, it is there. All the buttons and all that sort of stuff. And that's really it for this one. So I'll just place it back down into the shell carefully. Uh oh And also just one speaker. Just quickly, before I take apart the controller, I'll just see if this still works. It does still work, and a bit of the thing came off. So that's never going to work properly again. Do you think the controller has enough screws in it? You've got seven screws holding the thing together, and then you've got two for the actual connector. These are all in place to keep the high quality components in place, and they're doing a good job. So let's have a look at this controller. Let's see how bad it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. That's all you have for the controller. That was really interesting. <laughs> I was kind of expecting a little bit more, but for a controller that looks a little something like that. You can't expect terribly much. All right, let's take the screws out for the connector and just see if it's just a bunch of wires on pins. I'd say that would be the case. Wires and pins? Yeah, that's yep, pretty close. I wonder if someone could do some mad hacks and use this on some other random system. That'd be kind of cool. I'll stick that back on there, put the two screws in, package this back up, and we'll move on to the second last one in this wonderful showcase of pop stations. Moving on to the next one, we have this thing. This is another PSP clone with four games, 
and a controller, which I believe has yellowed over the years. I think it used to be silver, but now it's more of a gold color. Kind of suits the aesthetic. Can replace the Playfield calorie. Pure Khan Rune arc in oversized display. Just agree. We've got game there and some text that looks like it's drunk and sort of stumbling around. Four in one game right there. It's the GS572. And we do have some writing up the top, which says the Depept tied body fights each other the machine of brain play field if that makes sense to you good on you because i don't know what that means at all so if we now flip this over we have the instructions instructions on exchange game card so we have warrior struggle for supremacy football warrior see for nothing war and set plum <laughs> A set plum lighter fighter jet or litter fighter jet whichever way you want to say that if you want to pause and read that feel free because um there's probably some good stuff on here but yep the depeptide body fights each other the machine of brain play field just yep all good so let's crack this open and take a better look at whatever the hell this thing is oh there's a better look at the background too so you have an akura nsx right there a fighter jet and a missile of some sorts and some clouds at the top so it all looks good but oh boy the smell that has just leaked out of this packaging oh it's not nice it is definitely not nice but anywho grab out that grab out this grab out our four games first things first the game the gs572 looks like a psp except we only have two buttons which are very spongy we have the d-pad which kind of pushes all down at the same time and then we have black and red at the top for the controller which is kind of nifty on off switch the game just pops out like that but if you see there there's some little tiny contacts just poking out so this is more sophisticated it still uses this whole strip thing to work but inside of this has yeah probably a little tiny pcb to actually tell the pop station hey you've put this game in so let's use this but we'll get to that soon we've got a single speaker and popping this out reveals two AAA batteries that we've got to put in the games just don't have names on them you just guess so that would be soccer that would be the fighter war jet thing do we have oh no that's probably the fighter war jet thing uh what's on here then the sands of time who knows and the controller is a slaver a stretched bmw right there and it says slaver and these are nothing they're just painted on they're just these brown nubs that are just stuck there to look like analog sticks close enough a and b the buttons actually feel better on this than they do on that which is saying something anyways let's start demonstrating this thing what's the sound going to be like on this one Oh, flashing LED as well. Nice. Start. Here we go. I'll choose you. And it's City Fighter, as you would expect. So, just put them in a corner and just sit there and just mash A and you have won, pretty much. The controller, though. So weird that it has a black and red. Two 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks that just go in like oh hang on oh shit okay there you go all right two player mode uh two player doesn't work hang on no maybe not nope two player mode doesn't work well with this game anyways which is a bit weird considering that should be a two player game let's try another one i also will disassemble one of the screens to have a look at the innards so we'll try this random one next you know game was that the start of mario da -da 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 -da. yeah it is it is yep this one appears to be broken because all of the sprites are just sort of everywhere and i can't really tell what's going on i'll just switch that off try the next game which would be this thing we'll just see if this one picks up anything Oh, it kind of says score. It says something. We're close. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going. What was that? This is like a ticking time bomb right here. I don't know when it's going to explode. Okay, everything's working perfectly. Maybe there's some dust or something on this rubber strip that's not communicating with this. I bet soccer will work completely fine, won't it? Yep, of course it would. So then, can I use the controller now to move around whoever I am? 
You know, I can't really tell because all of it's just moving around and I'm pressing buttons. I don't, yeah, I really don't know what's going on, to be honest. The controller's probably not even working. We can kick the ball to... I think you get the point of this. <laughs> you get the point of what's going on. This one that didn't work, so let's have a look inside of it. Just see if these ones are any different. That's all that is there. It's just a tiny little PCB with some contacts on it. And that's all that just tells the system what game you've put in there. It's just a background there and the glass that displays stuff. And that's how the primitive LCD works, right there. I thought that PCB would have continued a little bit, but no, it's just the same old usual stuff. They've just made it ever so slightly more advanced by including a little PCB with contacts on it. Also, if you're wondering at this point in time, I don't have Chanticleer hegemony or hegemony or whatever it is called. I never ever got the chance to have that. Hopefully one of my games is pretty much the same thing. I actually don't even remember what Chanticleer hegemony is. I should look that video up and watch it because I haven't watched it in years. Let me just try this again and see if somehow I've fixed it. Probably not. No, it's just all over the screen like that. All right, crack this open then. I just want to see the controller connections, the black and red. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's advanced, but that probably doesn't work. You got the single speaker, the separate PCBs for the controller. It actually says sound on and off and reset and all that sort of stuff there. Pretty much looking like the usual pop station stuff that we've seen in the previous ones. So I'll just put that back down like so, and it's brand new. So far, I'm thinking the Mario Adventure one's the most advanced one out of the whole lot. I'm gonna say that's probably the best one. And then taking a look inside the controller, I'd say would be just what we've seen in the previous ones. Single board, nothing much else. All right, and this all just pops off like that. They've got plenty of room in there. They could have added something else in there, but uh, they didn't. It's just an empty hollow shell with a screw that just appeared out of nowhere. There we go. It's all back together, and uh, I can now put this back in the top that it came out of. Now, if you do recall the thumbnail of this video, you did see this unit displayed right in the middle of all of the pop stations. It's finally time to have a look at the last one that I have, and Ashens has reviewed a similar unit. Not quite the same, similar. This is... Oh, how am I even gonna do this? Uh, let's go up a little bit more. There we go. Barely fits, but this thing. Probably best to get it out of the packaging so I can show it off a little bit better. Basically, you have a small netbook with four games and port is already installed in there. We have a PlayStation 3 Boomerang controller. Sad that they never released this. Would have been cool to see that. And on the back, we just have a load of stuff on here. So let's start at the top. Four in one game player, YD998 with some fists just, you know, punching air there. The three games. Then we have the notebook itself. And then we have the characteristics for game cards such as City Fighter, Porter, Checkers, and Eagle Catch, Chick can be changed. Single or double fighters can be selected. Color background display screen. Power efficiency functions. The unit will be automatically off if there is no pressing any button within five minutes. Memory function. In the game, press SP button to pause and then press on off for power off. When it is switched again, it will return to the original pause mode. Changeable cards. Two players. Folding cover. Four in one game player. Large screen and color screen. Did that make sense? That made sense to me. Let's pop this open and show you what this thing is. This is the most advanced pop station I have. No, not really the most advanced, but it's the one with the most features. It's going to be fun to pull this one apart. Oh, look what I found. Instructions printed on a single sheet of toilet paper. You should remember where that's from. The art on the cardboard is, oh, that's, um, what's his name from Street Fighter? Guile? I don't know. Some checkers going on there. Legs. I don't know what he's doing, but he's having a good time. So we have the boomerang controller itself. It's just D-pad and buttons and that's it. But it looks pretty cool though. Then we have the unit itself, which actually has a bit of heft to it, but we'll just close that for now. And then we have our three games, which is Checkers, Porter, which is Super Mario. And then we have City Fighter. Of course, we have City Fighter with fists and half a body and some more stuff going on there. People are going to have to tell me where half this artwork is stolen from because I have no clue. And the unit itself. It's a YD. It kind of looks like a GPD, to be fairly honest, if you want to get a little bit technical there. And if we go around it, there's some unused areas for more connections, for more quality features that could have been implemented. On that side, you do have the second controller port as well as that there, which doesn't do anything. It's just there for decoration. On the back, nothing there. On the bottom, the battery cover and a bunch of screws to get into the thing. And then popping it open is where the magic happens. So I have two 
versions of Porter. I don't know if that was a mistake or if they intended that, but we do have two versions of it. But the greatest thing about this though, apart from having the XP background saying the features, you know, the 4-in-1 gameplay and color screen and start and it's 808 and it's in China, changeable cards and all that stuff, is that you can actually use the keyboard as... <laughs> It's the control system. Imagine sitting there like this going, yeah, I'm so winning Porter. I'm doing great at my game of Porter here. You know, the buttons actually don't feel too bad, to be honest. None of the other keys obviously work. Also, <laughs> it's been staring at me the whole time. I didn't even realize it. SPAC. And pretty much with this keyboard, they've just thrown around the keys and just put stuff in random locations and went, yep, there you go. You've got controls now. And this by far looks like the most premium unit with this aluminium finish here. It's not aluminium, it's just plastic though. And you've got notebook game for the touchpad and the dual speakers. I think there's only one in there though. But you press this to get the game out. You press the, the webcam. I assume that's supposed to be a webcam. And that's how that comes out. One battery, get in there. Two batteries. That was the most depressing Super Mario theme I have ever heard. <laughs> that was not slowed down by me. That was the actual console. It's also just making this. Now that sounds pretty nifty. Let's start with Porter first. I think there's a small problem with this. Let's try checkers. Oh, checkers works, but the sound is just... That's it. Oh. Never mind, we've got it working now. So this is checkers. And now you can select what you want to select and A and then you A and there you go. See, that's checkers. The sound effects are also really high quality. Good quality. You've got to press on off, then you have to put the game cartridge in. And now what you would essentially do is go on off, then reset. Okay, that version of Porter doesn't work. Let's try the other version of Porter. Aha! What am I doing? What, what, what am I supposed to be doing? Ah. Uh, Okay, what what exactly am I? Hang on. So, very Game & Watch-like here. I'm pretty sure it's using the same assets from Game Watch. Also, it says Word Hard. Didn't notice that. It also says, good job there. I'm doing a real good job. I'm trying my absolute hardest here. Okay, so that controls the bottom one. That controls the top one. I'm not exactly sure what to do here, but I have a feeling that it's like a conveyor belt sort of thing. I can't see what's going on. I'm looking through the viewfinder and I can barely see what's going on. Let me just sort of zoom in a little bit. Oh, he's yelling at him. Terrible job. All right, let's try and play this for real this time. Wait. I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Probably should have looked at the instructions. That would have helped. Let's try City Fighter then. I don't know what this is gonna be, but we'll try the controller with this one though. Can you even see what's going on there? Oh, look at that. This is more advanced. You know, this is the advanced version of City Fighter. Sound effects. All right. Congratulations, your winner. So, if we get the controller now... Nope, that doesn't work. I'll try Porter again. Oh. Nope, the controller doesn't work at all. Let me try that original Porter. Okay, so that Porter doesn't work. Also, I've just noticed quality and safety at the top there. So, this Porter is just a display one and the other one works. 
that's what I assume they have done with this. But this is the most advanced one. It has, you know, separate sound effects going on and all that sort of stuff. It does fold and look like a GPD, which is pretty nifty. It's the coolest looking one, I suppose. I mean, out of all of the pop stations and stuff, that's the coolest one. It's looking like an EPC. So, you know, it's got to have some good features. And honestly, the controls aren't too bad. And the games themselves are a bit higher quality than the other ones, ever so slightly. It's actually a pretty cool sort of system that they got going on here. This is what the GPD would have looked like if it was made on the budget of about three cents. Uh, that's, this is what it would look like. Pretty interesting, huh? We should take this apart and have a look at the innards of this advanced console here. Cause I reckon there's gonna be some good stuff in here. Take out the many screws that hold it together. Now I've never taken these apart as well. This is a first time for me. So let's have a look and see what cool technology they've put into here. I have a feeling I'll have to take the top casing off as well, but that's okay. I'm very intrigued to see the guts of this. I also don't know where I got this from. Probably some sort of, you know, two dollar shop or something no idea how much i paid for it though it definitely wasn't two dollars that's for sure probably would have been closer to 20 when i was collecting these things i was paying ridiculous amounts for these things because i was just really intrigued by them and really wanted to review them but just never got that opportunity to do so and now here i am 20 years later doing it well not 20 years but you know 16 years later let's crack that open and have a look and there you go that's it so we have our speaker our battery compartment the motherboard itself you can can kind of see through it. I don't want to really take it off because of all of those little finicky buttons with the rubber domes on them and stuff. They're a real pain to put back together. But from what I can see, there's two screws that hold the hinge in place. So I'll just take these off. And now I just have to pull this apart and it should just come apart. There we go. Finally, this should be the main guts of it. Um, and I've also just broken it. If we just kind of put it back together like that, you would never notice. The plastic's very brittle. It's not my fault. That's the main guts, the epoxy blob. It says MYH on there. And if I just sort of spin it around, it says 2007, this was made. Holy moly. Probably seems about correct for this. That's the very advanced pop station. Well, can you even call this a pop station? Also, I've definitely realized I've pulled this apart the wrong way because I've ripped off the plastic from the shell. It's just kind of, yeah. It doesn't matter. I've got to show you the insides. You got to see what it looks like. Just quickly, I'll take apart the controller, which just has one screw holding it together. I would assume so. Just one screw. Nope. Nope. It's one screw. And inside there is a little something like that. I broke it. Just the usual PCB and nothing else. Just curious to see if this does still work. Yep. That all still works. I may have broken it a little bit. It'll stay in its packaging and no one will ever see it again. And that's it. That is all the pop stations that I have. I figured I'd just do one big video instead of separating them all because it's just not really interesting to just see one and it's the exact same thing. So I thought I'll include every single one into one video and you can just skip along and see which one you wanted to see. If you wanted to see the netbook or the Wii ripoff or just the standard pop station, feel free to do so. That is all the pop stations I have to show you. And I might keep my eye out for any more if I see them at a market or something like that I might pick them up but you folks let me know what you thought of this you know if they're interesting it's not so much the games it's more the design and the quality that has been put into these units that really make them what they are I guess big thank you to Ashens for inspiring me to collect them and start my YouTube adventure and all that sort of stuff you know I'm very grateful for that and at least I've got that good memory of sending him something to have a look at on his channel that was really cool so yeah you could pretty much just call this a big Ashens tribute video not a tribute but like a uh, you know cheers to you sort of thing that's pretty much exactly what this is but i hope you enjoyed it nonetheless it's very different from my regular videos of looking at welcome devices and stuff they're still cheap bootleg knockoff things which is what i like to look at and i've shown them all off for your entertainment but anyways everyone if you need to use the timestamps to skip along to wherever you need to be that's completely fine this is a very very long video so it's something good to just have in the background or whatever you need to do but thank you very much for watching this video i really do appreciate it and i have plans to edit a job lot for the next video and then after that job lot i have no idea what i'm gonna do but i will figure it out so until i work out what the hell i'm doing take care stay safe be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video, which should be a job lot. I've got six hours of footage to edit down into something that's worth watching, so wish me luck. But until then, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next one.
If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.